They make the people suffer, not the oligarchs, the people, the people of Russia, the people of Europe. And they're not going to help save lives because the more arms you pump into Ukraine, the more the war will be prolonged, the more Ukrainians can, will die. And it might sound radical, colleagues, but the answer to war is not more war. As the Russia-Ukraine crisis unveils, more and more people like Ms. Daly have seen a clearer picture of the Russia-Ukraine crisis. Who is making the most of it? Who is creating more chaos other than working for peace and why? To answer these questions, we have to wind back to the very start of the conflict. Before it began, the United States kept warning about an imminent Russian attack on Ukraine. Because it wanted to diffuse the tension, its actions have said otherwise. In December 2021, instead of dealing with the Russia proposed drafts on security guarantees, Washington cold shouldered Moscow's request for dialogue. It led NATO to increase forces deployed on its eastern flank and aggravated regional tensions. As former U.S. Ambassador to the Soviet Union Jack F. Matlock revealed, it was an avoidable crisis predicted but willfully precipitated and an elaborate charade to serve a domestic political end. After the 1991 dissolution of the Soviet Union, the United States needs a new imaginary enemy to stitch together its increasingly fractured alliance and to justify the existence of NATO, a relic of the Cold War. Peter Kuznick, director of the Nuclear Studies Institute at American University, observed that there is no enemy, we define new enemies and we created them. The U.S. doesn't win these wars, they allow the U.S. to maintain hegemony. Russia serves as the ideal enemy. In the past decades, the United States has been squeezing Russia's strategic space. Since 1999, it has led NATO in pursuing five rounds of enlargement. The organization moved over 1,000 kilometers eastward to somewhere near Russia's borders, pushing the letter to the wall. Furthermore, Washington has orchestrated color revolutions in Russia's neighbors. A trap had been in the making in Ukraine, where it supported two color revolutions. The first bringing pro-Western Viktor Yushchenko to power in 2005, and the second ousting Viktor Yanukovych in 2014. Step by step, Moscow has been pushed into a Cold War-style chess game set by Washington. As it turned out, the conflict serves as a tool of threat for the United States to bind its allies together again, a justified excuse to weaken Russia economically, mainly by sanctions, and politically by waging public opinion warfare and a big party for its military-industrial complex. Franklin Spinney, a former military analyst for the Pentagon, had a vivid description of such a celebratory mood. The champagne corks quietly popping in the Pentagon on K Street, in the defense industry and throughout the halls of Congress. So who created this chaos? Are sanctions really meant for peace? And who doesn't really want the conflict to end soon? Financial Times columnist Janan Garnish wrote, America will be the ultimate winner of the Ukrainian crisis. It stands to gain in stature and influence in Europe Asia and the Court of World Opinion. But Grant Golub, a contributing fellow at Defense Priorities, cautioned, Washington cannot fall for feel-good nostalgia about its Cold War victory. The 21st century requires bigger and bolder solutions than the ones the previous century can offer. To stave off disaster, the United States and its allies will need to think differently. <laughs>